welcome friends uh, so now we will uh, talk as uh, as had said now we will after the uh, you know uh, we finished the first part in quality research now we will move into the after the ethnography we will move into the depth interview right depth interview focus group discussion and case study are three uh, other ways of approaches of uh, doing a qualitative research which is extremely important because they have their own uh, benefits at uh, uh, you know and uh, at certain stages maybe an ethnography is required as we discussed earlier uh, and, uh, and sometimes an a case study is required to do a entire uh, understand a entire case or a, uh, about a firm or uh, an organization or anything and similarly uh, group discussions you know focus group discussions basically are nothing but group discussions only so focus group as i had said so anything so let's see what is this depth interview Generally, uh, students and researchers uh, might uh, sometimes get confused that an interview is generally like a questionnaire, uh, you know, we send a questionnaire or uh, you know, uh, and uh, schedule and try to collect information from the respondent and then utilize this uh, data uh, for inferring something, right. But that is a case of interview or a questionnaire where we do not take uh, another opinion of uh, we take the opinion of rather a large number of uh, pool of people right on a particular study on a particular area of research. Uh, for example, uh, you may be uh, you have taken the interviews of let us say uh, you know through a questionnaire interviews of let us say a questionnaire is a standard format right. So, a questionnaire right. So, uh, you have taken about respondents are let us say 1 to 300 let us say right. So, on the uh, uh, when you take 300 people's responses and then you use it that is a different study. But when we are saying a depth interview it means as you see on a television channel for example, uh, a, 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 a very anchor uh, or a host takes the interview of the guest uh, on a particular subject. So, why it is done? The point is we have to understand uh, sometimes there are issues, there are topics on which uh, we cannot ask large number of people because sometimes of the lack of availability of knowledge also. Let us say who would be the best person to talk about uh, the arms and ammunitions for example, let us say maybe the uh, army chief or uh, even the defense minister right or somebody of that ca caliber or that stature right who has uh, who has gone through these exercises of discussion and under understanding the defense and its uh, equipments ok. So, in such uh, conditions uh, like energy requirement of a country in the future and all these things we use a, uh, a case of this uh, you know depth interview where we take few people their opinion and uh, we take again in a very extensive manner right. So, uh, as you can see a depth interview could be an unstructured direct personal interview in which a single respondent is probed by a highly skilled interviewer. So, now understand first of all this is unstructured if you it could be structured it is not key it has always to be an unstructured way, but mostly it is unstructured because unstructured when it is unstructured it is more flexible right. So, you can bring in new thoughts you can change the direction of the study uh, as per the requirement right if you if it is if you desire to add something uh, or delete something uh, from your uh, what you had earlier thought of then you can make those changes right. Uh, and in which it says the respondent uh, is a single respondent mostly so and generally he is an expert in that area right and he is taken by a highly skilled interviewer. Now, this is a very important because sometimes you must have seen like the BBC uh, correspondent right a, a, a person who is an expert and he is highly skilled interviewer who can make really they say that they uh, you know facing such interviews are so arduous so tough that. Uh, people break down right they have even nervous breakdown right. So, it depends on what kind of the skill the interviewer has right to uncover the underlying motivations the belief attitude and feelings on the topic ok. So, now how does one move into this uh, uh, you know uh, way of uh, interviewing let us say. So, in interviewing when we interview in take an in depth interview there are three things basically to start with we say the first is the laddering. Now, ladder laddering it comes from the word ladder 
So, right, ladder is something to, uh, on which you through which you the help of which you climb, right. So, the line of questioning proceeds from the product characteristics to the user characteristics. So, it tells you how to move exactly, right. So, this technique allows the researcher to tap into the consumer's network of meanings. For example, a, this is a study which was done by uh, United Airlines, in fact, right. What did they do? They wanted to know ki what do people like? Do they like more uh, a, a aircraft which, which is very wide or uh, width of the aircraft is not so important, right. So, they found that people said most of the people liked the aircrafts when they were more wide in uh, uh, shape and why? Then they asked why do you like uh, wide air, uh, aircrafts, body aircrafts? So, the uh, respondents, the customer said, I can get more work done. Now, I do not know how it is connected, but they said when it is wider, we can do more work. Maybe, maybe there is an elbow space to move their arms and hands. I can accomplish more. So, uh, I can get more work done. I can accomplish more. I feel good about myself. So, if you see ultimately this is getting connected with success, accomplishment and finally, the status, right. I feel good about myself. So, when uh, from the product characteristics, the company has moved into the user's uh, characteristics. So, as a result, the company came with a advertising theme because it, advertising is the way you connect with the people, right. So, you will feel good about yourself. You will feel good about yourself when flying a airline. You are the boss, says United Airlines. So, I feel good about myself, people had said. So, they said, you are the boss. So, the status symbol was cached in a better way by the company United Airlines. Okay. Second, after you have those laddering, you have the hidden issue question. Now, hidden issues. Now, what are the hidden issues? Okay. So, now if you see the focus is not on socially shared values. Now, in life as I said, we have certain desires we have certain interests, but some many a times we suppress them because of the fear of the society, because that uh, people might laugh at us and certain things. So, that is how I said there is a uh, you know people are coming in the virtual world, they want to at least enjoy them their life, whatever they want to and all these things right. So, that is a great potential as a new is an area where people can really companies can work on. So, uh, socially shared values, but rather on personal source spots. The focus is not on the socially shared values, but on the personal source spots, not on general lifestyles, but on the deeply felt personal concerns, right. So, many a times people are not able to reveal this. For example, you see fantasies, what are my fantasies? How, what kind of a work life, work lives I am having I want or what kind of a social life I am thinking of, what kind, right. So, people have different tastes, some have got uh, fantasies for historic things, right. They want to have an elite, uh, uh, want to be like very elite and all, right? A masculine approach or an aggressive approach and uh, uh, competitive activities. For example, they want to be very competitive in nature. Now, these things are something which are which do not come in uh, very uh, abruptly, which is very not very clear at the uh, initial stage, but this is something very highly hidden within the people, right? So, these things. When Lufthansa Airlines, they did it, they did a study to find out, they understood that people, they what they did was Lufthansa Airlines understood this that uh, people want a more masculine approach. So, they used the Red Baron spokesperson, which was used in the World War II, right? Uh, two or one, I am not con uh, sure, but uh, in the World War. So, they use this kind of a Red Baron spokesperson as a, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to uh, reflect their uh, uh, personality, right, of the airline's personality. So, what it uh, was uh, explained was basically, it, co it communicated the aggressiveness of the airline, uh, the high status symbol and the competitive heritage of the airline. So, it, it, it uh, you know, it uh, gave a new personality to the airlines, right. So, this is how Lufthansa, when they did it, it was very surprising that this actually helped in improving their image in the market and thus their, uh, you know, sales also improved. Second is who does not know about the famous the famous Marlboro man, right. So, all the uh, most of the superstars, they have uh, done this ad also, right. 
So, uh, if you can look at this the come to where the flavor is and why this ad became such a historical ad if you remember if you see this man looks like a cowboy he has got a kind of a rope or something on his shoulder now he is uh, consuming a cigarette although cigarettes are banned and I am not uh, encouraging cigarettes they are not healthy but this is how the company Philip Morris started right. So, what they did was they thought that the in the underlying motivation of people is to look more masculine, more rough and tough and that is what even uh, sometimes women appreciate right. So, to do this they connected they connected the personality of a cowboy to anybody who is consuming the Marlboro cigarette. As a result this ad this particular ad of this this uh, you know imagery and the ad this which uh, was uh, supported uh, the uh, you know the um, uh, ad which was supported by Marlboro with uh, to this product became a hugely successful campaign a hugely successful campaign Marlboro became one of the uh, most successful products of the world right. So, this is how uh, uh, qualitative research here understands what is your internal motivation what is your internal desire and it uses those latent desires and brings it to the surface. <coughs> the third is the symbolic analysis symbolic now if you understand the word symbolic symbolic means to that something is symbolic so it represents something right. So, what is done here is symbolic analysis attempts to analyze the symbolic meaning of the objects what does this object mean to you for example right by comparing them with their opposites. So, that it is compared against their opposites ok. So, the logical opposites are for example, non usage of the products attributes of an imaginary non product uh, opposites basically right. Let us take this few questions again this was done by one of the airlines right what it did what would it be like if you could no longer use airplanes. So, they have put in the put the public at large into a situation ki what would happen. Now, suppose somebody will say suppose I ask you this question what would be like if you could no longer use airplanes everybody will have their own reply somebody might think oh how do we move uh, you know our mobility will be affected somebody will think how will things be transported. So, many th different opinions would come, but some of the very interesting opinions that came was without planes I would have to rely on letters and long distance calls that means this is this maybe this was the uh, you know reply which has been most often said by the public the, 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 the respondents. So, when they said this without planes I would have to rely on letters and long distance calls that means airplanes are not only transporters of people, but also they have been largely understood as the transporters of uh, the communication uh, things like letters and uh, you know information. So, airlines now this airlines started selling to the managers face to face communications right. So, they uh, what did they do they uh, they created an advertising theme which said the airline will do the same thing for a manager as federal express does for a package. So, they said the managers are the people who basically fly basically right company corporate managers and all. So, they said it will exactly do the same to a manager what federal express does to a package that is a safe delivery. So, by saying this they connected the symbolic meaning of safety and ingrained into the mind of the uh, you know the, the, the consumer the, uh, the potential consumer. So, this is another important uh, thing that uh, comes out of the depth interview ok. Now, some of the uh, applications again let me just uh, go through it detailed probing of the respondent. Uh, for example, the automobile purchases what do they look in while they uh, buy I will tell you a very interesting example of a detergent. A detergent company wanted to understand ki what do housewives look in when they purchase a uh, you know uh, detergent. So, when they uh, in fact, this is not a part of exactly depth interview it was the case of the focus group which maybe I will uh, go next, but uh, similarly what they found was that people are buying. Uh, a particular product for very very different reasons sometimes they are symbolic reasons sometimes they have got some hidden uh, you know meanings to that and that is how the uh, product is becoming popular sometimes we say like for example, Michael Jackson had uh, also used this product. 
so that becomes more symbolic in nature and people start loving the product more that is how that's why maybe the reason is celebrity endorsement becomes very popular in marketing research okay and marketing discussing of uh, confidential sensitive or embarrassing topics for example your personal finance right contraceptives detailed understanding of the complicated behavior why how do people buy why do they buy when do they buy even mechanical devices let me tell you are utilized to understand ki what happens when people look at a particular thing now for example the size of the uh, you know uh, pupil now that gets uh, little expanded so when that it gets expanded automatically that means the person has become uh, has, is liking it and is getting affected so uh, if, uh, liking or surprised whatever could could be but he is getting affected right interviews with professional people industrial marketing it is a case of b2b research where all the respondents respondents are highly educated right and uh, these respondents are very professional driven so you have to have an in depth interview to understand about your research for example why do manufacturing firms or firms outsource for example is a topic now that cannot be answered by everybody so the the uh, maybe the vp purchase the sourcing manager or somebody can tell you ki what do they look in when they outsource a particular component or a product right interviews with competitors who are uh, likely to reveal the information in a group setting now competitors would obviously never uh, ex, uh, you know di uh, divulge their uh, ideas on an open uh, platform uh, on a, you know you know in a interview or something so sometimes in such cases a group setting is uh, required to do that which we will be doing in the next maybe the focus group right so uh, as i was uh, let me explain you with uh, the sony playstation 3 case right how depth interview was used to uh, determine the consumer attitude and purchasing motivation towards the playstation 3 right so now uh, what are the key insights so when they did an in depth interview for of those people who were basically using those products they found that friends were coming together and spending evenings to play a game against each other right challenging games required more critical thinking and decision making right because they were uh, more difficult to do so it seemed more like a puzzle rather than a game so the uh, whole uh, game now became more like a puzzle right so some and some games were suited to adults only children were uh, not uh, unable to play so one doesn't like playing a kid game because uh, you know they found that uh, the insight was that one doesn't like playing a kids game the kids games are taken to be very inferior so but taking part in a high quality gaming experience this is what people wanted right so what are the marketing implication out of it so the companies Uh, you know, setting up this uh, set up game kiosks in nightclubs in the last cities to attract adults to play, right? Some of these games, okay, uh, on the Sony PlayStation. The target magazines such as Wired Sports started having more matured ads to attract the adults towards the uh, Sony PlayStation Three. Advertisement was also done through some of the uh, programs, sitcoms, uh, such as very popular the Friends, right? Uh, in which it was uh, shown that joy and chandler were playing games on the playstation 3 so with such high demand that the of sony product the company realized that it must continue to learn about the consumer behavior pattern so depth interview helped them not only to understand the insight but also to uh, make it a, a better marketing experience for their consumers okay now let us uh, after this uh, we will go to the next important thing that is in a quality research is focus group discussion as i had said a focus group as you can see seems like a group of people sitting together and discussing about a particular issue of interest okay so there is a trained moderator the trained moderator uh, is basically moderating the whole group right and the main purpose is again to gain the insights by creating a forum where respondents feel more relaxed and they can come out of the uh, on their own so they can speak up something which other uh, you know uh, otherwise they would not have said so uh, how it is done the characteristics are the group size is basically 8 to 12 so it is a small group so as i said the number of samples are very limited one has to be very careful in selecting this 8 to 12 people because you don't have an option of having more right so the group composition is um, uh, mostly they are homogeneous in nature and uh, they are pre screened that means each of the respondent has been already uh, tested beforehand right physical setting is very informal and relaxed 
it is the time duration is 1 to 3 hours. Why it is kept at 1 to 3 hours? The reason being in the initial time maybe first few minutes people might not be able to come out on their own right into the. So, uh, that is why it is a little longer time period and audio and video cassettes are uh, used to record maybe what they say their modulation of the voice because and their tone and their you know uh, aggression their emphatic uh, nature and then how uh, basically uh, they are behaving their body language and all these things has to be recorded right moderator is basically observational observ uh, observational he is observing right and he is only uh, helping in uh, keeping the momentum going of the uh, uh, discussion and uh, it entirely depends on the communica communication skills. Okay. So, what are the let us say how does it uh, what are the uh, steps first is you define the problem what are we going to do in this uh, let us say in the focus group discussion what are we going to conduct what is our objective of interest. Okay. Then is specify the objectives of the qualitative research. right? state the objectives of the questions to be answered. So, we see obviously when you are doing a focus group you need to be very clear that you do not deviate out of the path completely right. So, if you get too much of distracted dist too much distracted then it is a problem then uh, maybe uh, you will not get your objectives done properly. Then uh, the moderators to do this uh, first of all you have to have a proper uh, co uh, like a you know a, a decent questionnaire kind of a thing have a few questions in mind what do you want. So, for do to do this the devil, the moderator has his has to have his own outline. So, outline is nothing but the boundary the boundary within which the uh, moderator has to uh, keep the uh, discussion and not go out of it right and then conduct the uh, interview uh, focus group interviews uh, and then discussions uh, interviews and then finally, review the uh, tape and analyze the data and summarize the findings. Okay. Now, uh, as I had said a moderator uh, leads and develops the discussion he starts he uh, uh, you know uh, initiates the discussion basically right. Now, some of the key qualities of the uh, you know uh, moderator has to be one has to be extremely uh, you know uh, good because he has to be kind he has to per be permissive involve the uh, rest of the people right and uh, the he must uh, encourage to uh, talk about uh, more specific uh, things rather than the generalized comments. Huh? Huh? So, these are some of the uh, you know uh, qualifications of the moderator he should be encouraging the uh, participants right uh, he should be very flexible because flexibility if it is there then maybe uh, you can uh, unearth more uh, you know uh, unearth more or interpret better uh, things uh, of the discussion related to the discussion and then the moderator must be able to improvise and alter the planned planned outline right that means what in if it is required then you need to be able to you have to be flexible enough to uh, slightly change keep the like you know as if you are holding a steering you are driving a car. So, you should be able to change your directions as if and when required okay. and as I said it has to be the moderator must be sensitive enough to guide the group. Some people are not uh, emotionally very sound or uh, they are very uh, sensitive. So, they have to be taken care of somebody might not be very literate or might not be very uh, you know uh, outspoken. So, they also have to be balanced all these things. Okay. So, it can be two way focus group right where one group listens and uh, then uh, they speak up. So, for example, a group of physicians viewed a focus group of arthritis patients right discussing the treatment they desired. Now, the patients wanted a particular kind of desire which uh, they were discussing among themselves and the uh, doctors were just listening to them. So, when they were listening they could come out ki what actually people like what actually people want. Now, this is a medicine. So, I, we cannot say what pe patient want the doctor will have to give, but in case of let us say a product. So, if the patient the uh, you know if the uh, for manufacturers are looking at it they can observe the people and think then what they could be they should be giving to the public to the consumer right. Dual moderator group is uh, where two moderators are there one is responsible for the smooth flow and the other only ensures that the specific issues are discussed because sometimes in a flow there is a possibility that you might miss the important questions. So, the other moderator the second moderator basically he ensures that this list of questions are not missed. Okay. Now, what is a dwelling group this is very interesting 
dwelling group is sometimes what happens or uh, you know in, uh, in a classroom also you must have seen that one group uh, or one person is very dominant right he uh, speaks something and the others are not able to speak they might be just uh, you know keeping silent so what happens there are two moderators but they deliberately take opposite positions so when they take opposite positions suppose the moderator has said a is good right and uh, and some people don't like it but they cannot even oppose the moderator or somebody who is very dominating. So, the other moderator says why is A good? So, when he says this what happens the people who are not supporting A right they feel that there is also a possibility for them or a chance for them to speak up right. So, this is what happens in a dwelling moderating group right. Now, uh, respondent moderator group are basically the moderator asks the selected participants to play the role of moderator temporarily. So, he it is like you know uh, uh, in an interviewer interview the interview and interviewer both change their positions what ha would happen suppose if I if the other person allows him uh, instead of the interviewee uh, the interviewer allows him to be asked question it is exactly like that ok. So, client participants now clients uh, personal client person means the company's personal are identified and made part of the discussion group. Now, this also is done in case studies also sometimes what we do is we ask the client to be a part of the discussion. So, that he can very well bring in the real uh, uh, real things into the uh, discussion. So, by bringing the realities what happens is the discussion becomes more richer more richer and people speak on, uh, uh, more, on a more in a more realistic manner right instead of hypothesizing things instead of assuming things they speak more realistically ok they think more realistically. <coughs> Many groups are small groups so and they are uh, which are done on basis of by on over the phone sometimes conference calls and conference call techniques right. Online focus groups are becoming very popular nowadays. Now, these are very very popular becoming very popular because uh, because of the uh, difference in the in space and uh, distance uh, it is becoming important when in the globalized world uh, that to bring in people from different nations different places together is becoming very important. So, advantages of the focus group uh, synergism right it synergizes the whole issue brings in lot of synergy that means a lot of thought process snowballing it, it allows the group to start the uh, you know discussion and bring in more new new thoughts connecting to it right stimulates the thought process when people generally uh, are idle but once the uh, pro discussion starts they become more uh, uh, energized and uh, they get stimulated right security so that means uh, what happens is uh, you are uh, secured uh, that security feeling is there that whatever i am saying uh, i am uh, okay with it because the group is a compatible group and that is why there is a uh, security of my thoughts right spontaneity obviously when uh, you know you are speaking on a uh, spontaneity what happens is many a times when you are given time when a respondent is given time he would like to bring in or he would like to uh, you know uh, um, uh, camouflage his intentions or he can uh, what he can do is he can uh, 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 you know um, uh, for example, let us understand this way when spontaneity comes a true picture reveals right when I am giving you time you can uh, maybe play with your uh, uh, words or you can change your uh, words and the real thing might not come out, but due to spontaneity in a group discussion naturally the things flow out ok. Now, serendipity is something like uh, 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 how great right how how great uh, you know or uh, um, you can say uh, how much uh, of great things uh, or great ideas are coming in uh, which are sub which are sudden and uh, which might come out suddenly in a group discussion right and the scientific scrutiny finally, the structure of the uh, group. So, the final structure which I am saying is that means, uh, you are staying within the boundaries of the discussion and not going out of the uh, discussion. So, these are some of the advantages of the focus group right ok. Obviously, speed being one of the biggest advantages because you see uh, what you could have done in a research maybe you would have taken lot of time at within a group discussion with 8-10 people uh, 
you can do or uh, maybe uh, multiple group discussions like that and come out with after 5 group discussions with 10, 10 people each, maybe 50 people, you are getting an information in 2 to 3 days of time very easily what you could not have collected maybe in months time, right. So, that is a very important advantage. So, disadvantages of the uh, focus group is for example, it can be misutilized, uh, it is not conclusive, it is just exploratory. So, uh, sometimes there can be a bias also that can come in, the, it depends on the moderator, how he moderates, it could become very messy, you know, sometimes the complicated and the whole thing. Uh, so, basically it depends on how effectively the uh, discussion goes on, right, and how effectively the moderator does it, right. Misrepresentation for not solely for decision making, it is not solely for decision making. So, uh, sometimes uh, the whole objective is misrepresented, sometimes may be possible. Okay. So, now if you can see here as if uh, they are saying there is a war, there is a fight between the two, uh, he says 3, so he is saying it is 4, from this angle it is 4, from this angle it is 3. So, the representation might be a questionable thing, right? it can happen, but all said and done they do understand one thing is very important that focus groups are very powerful techniques to understand how people would behave and uh, in a group and uh, what they would tell comes out very naturally and uh, they are sometimes very great ideas right applications are uh, for you know uh, considering uh, like uh, understanding consumers perceptions preferences all these things obtaining impressions about a new product concept generating ideas as I was saying about the, I just forgot, I was telling about the detergent. When they uh, did a focus group to understand about what do women like uh, when they uh, see when they buy a detergent. So, they did a focus group discussion and uh, uh, people started speaking about price, quality, fragrance, all this, that, 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 that. And finally, they came to uh, uh, a unanimous conclusion that the most important thing was actually the discharge of the colored water, uh, the color of the sorry, 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 the color of the discharged water. So, the water that is getting discharged out of the let us say after washing the cloth or in the water left out in the bucket or in the washing machine. Now, the water that is getting discharged, the, the darkness of it says that this detergent is taking out more uh, you know dirt out of the uh, clothes and thus it is a very stronger detergent, right. So, these kind of ideas can only come through in a uh, uh, focus group, right. So, price impressions, what are the right prices for a product? So, sometimes the company might be thinking we are uh, uh, having a dynamic, uh, fantastic product, so we should be pricing very high, but the consumer does not feel so and that only comes when they make a argument, a debate, a discussion over it, right. Online focus groups are nowadays as I said, as a small groups which are uh, respondents are pre-recruited from an online list of people who have expressed interest in participating and a questionnaire is already given to them, so that they know uh, on basis of which they are qualified and they are already told everything the rules, how they can answer because in a online they do not have the maybe the voice or something. So, they uh, are given uh, the methods, how they can answer the questions and all. So, everything is explained. So, this is an uh, you know photo uh, a screenshot of a online uh, uh, you know uh, focus group discussion where people are discussing about a particular uh, object uh, of uh, marketing research right and their opinions are will be recorded the transcripts will be recorded at the end ok. So, uh, I do not want to uh, uh, take too much of time here this is a small group as I said is a small time, but it is very difficult to verify and the researcher has very little control over here. Right. Whereas, here the control is uh, uh, very uh, high in a, a traditional group and this is difficult to verify because we cannot sometimes uh, because of the uh, because the uh, you know respondent is not there, the participant is not there with us. So, it becomes very difficult, right. Uh, but otherwise this is very the advantage is very cheap and it is a very uh, economically uh, driven, right. It is very economical to do a online uh, survey. So, this is a case where uh, in the Atlanta uh, mall of Atlanta. The objective was to understand the shopping expectations, small as of the youth segment, to determine their expect, uh, perceptions about the weekend visits, and to determine the perceive the brand identity of the mall. So the company did a um, focus group discussion. Okay, what was the method? Reactions were uh, collected from 60 youth, right? Now how did they do? Now six focus groups were conducted, as I was saying just a while back. 
little while back uh, with 10 respondents considering equal number of male and female equal male equal female so 10 5 5 okay current focus groups are conducted at a local focus group facility the youth were given 30 dollars and instructed to visit the mall without any knowledge that they would be participating initially so uh, uh, so what has happened so when they uh, did it uh, uh, they found that after the uh, 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 group discussion after the focus group discussion they found that people uh, were spending their this 30 dollars that they were given uh, how they would be spending they wanted to also have a feel of it right so they understood that they were spending and mostly they were trying to limit within their budgets and they were not uh, trying to go beyond their budgets so that means what one thing was that people when they were visiting a mall they wanted to uh, not to spend too much right that was one of the findings and they thought that the uh, brand identity the malls brand identity was uh, actually very refreshing right very refreshing and it was a good experience right uh, so all these things when they did when they did by doing this they could understand that what exactly they were expecting from the mall the mall owners so the mall owners did one more thing they started uh, they stopped the uh, some kind of a you know uh, uh, discrimination on basis of dresses dress codes and all so that was stopped and they started creating more uh, 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 points of refreshment you can say refreshment and uh, of uh, recreation by having more uh, uh, fast food joints uh, you know or uh, uh, where foods were available or you know fountains uh, created fountains so that that the entire uh, thing was that the people will feel more relaxed right so this was an outcome of the focus group discussion which if somebody would have done a quantitative research would not have been possible to find out so that is why it becomes very important to go through a qualitative research. Okay. Thank you very much for the day.